Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Anthony Cummins. I'm a historical researcher and author. Please enjoy the video. Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Right, today we're going to be on how to be a modern samurai. Okay, I'm going to talk to you today about samurai martial arts. So, but if you're interested in samurai, samurai stuff, please do get yourself a copy of that. And also we're going to talk about the martial arts in this section. So, I got another email. Another email. Actually, what's this about taijutsu and all this so very nice man very polite email so wanted to know about samurai martial arts and actually i thought i may as well make a video on this because there is actually there's still that lagging behind now i know a lot of the people here watching this video do understand the score with this but let's lay it all out okay so what martial arts did the samurai do what did they actually do? Now, people jump up and go, Judo, Aikido, and you even get Karate, and you get Aikijutsu, and you're like, oh, Taijutsu, Jujutsu. Um, by the way, Jujitsu is an older way of saying Jujutsu. Uh, the, it was in the early days they switched the spelling around, but you should be saying Jujutsu and spelling it with a J-U. It used to be spelled J-I in the early days, but actually now they've sort of standardized everything uh, it should be juju because jujitsu is something else it's totally separate word uh, but anyway so you've got this idea of these martial art names being pushed around and people who do aikido will have a samurai display and you sometimes get people who do karate who have a samurai piece of armor and you you're sort of like and i know you guys out there are now thinking eh, and i know that's what i'm that's my point that's what i'm getting at so basically we have to look at a few things. The question is, is what martial arts did the samurai do before 1600? That's the actual question, because we know what they did from the 1600s onwards. Uh, we know the types of things we did. And we also know what happened when they wrapped up and then they created the, the newer martial arts from the older martial arts. Excuse me. So let's go from the beginning. Karate, not a Japanese martial art invented in Okinawa, not brought over to Japan until uh, on wholesale until after the samurai, way after the samurai, 50 years after. So karate out, forget that. Um, I actually had a really embarrassing, not embarrassing, but I was doing a demonstration of Natori and I said, so who enjoys the samurai to a karate class? And they went, no, we like Okinawa. And I thought, fair enough, I'll listen anyway. <laughs> so you got that. Aikido, invented later on, based on samurai ways however it's a very different system to the old ways it was based where on the guy who actually the founder of aikido is actually also part of a different japanese religion i'm not gonna say cult but they weren't an official religion in the sense that it's not one of the standard major ones it became a little bit of a fringe religion with a lot of this energy pushing and energy stuff and that's why aikido is full of energy and uh, you know talk about energy aiki Go the way of meeting energy. So it's about that. So you've got to really, when people do Aikido, or people automatically leap to defend Aikido. But what you've got to remember is Aikido is set up for a specific thing at a specific place outside of Tamarai times. That's just a fact. Uh, but it does contain some essence of Samurai ways. Now, Aikijutsu is a little bit similar. Um, it's the same thing. Aiki meeting energies, if you like. And um, that leaves Jujutsu. Uh, which you would say, oh, that must be samurai then. Well, actually, it is, but we we get we let's refine that question. Samurai before sixteen hundred. So, what was it like before sixteen hundred? And the other one is taijutsu, Anthony. I've seen taijutsu, uh, you know, and now everybody's like taijutsu and jujutsu. They seem as separate things, and you're like, mm. and the question I got via email is, what exactly is taijutsu? If we know what jujutsu is, well, you know, this is what hopefully I'll have a go at uh, explaining. Or explaining what we don't know. So, the other day, uh, if you don't know, the Shogun has just done a new video on the Ban Sen Shukai, the Book of Ninja. And some guy was like, uh, okay, fair enough, Anthony's historical research. He's done all the ninja stuff, but don't ever let him teach you anything about swordsmanship. Which made me, I was like, okay, and this was only yesterday. I was like, mm, okay then, right. Because my opinion is that the way samurai swordsmanship is done today it's not exactly as it was pre-1600. I've not put all my information together yet, but it's definitely on my list of to sort out. Now, sorted out, ninjas, sorted. 
Samurai, we've got, a, with the Book of Samurai series and my research, we've got a nice, a little bit extra information that pads out the world of the Samurai that we know. And I'm going to continue doing that. So you get a, not ninja, I reform the image. With Samurai, I'm going to try and get a more rounded image instead of this like, I am heroic warrior samurai, I will capture the dragon. You know what I mean? It's like, I will die after a battle. You know, it's like, no, that's not what they did. So let's let's round that image off. And what does all the bits mean? Through Book of Samurai series and all that, we're doing that. So one of the steps is to work out what was martial arts like before 1600. Now, why would I say what's it like before 1600? Obviously, everybody out there with a history, uh, a knowledge of Japanese history is, okay, Sakikahara, Tokugawa, the area of peace comes in and everything like that. Okay, we're there. But actually, there is a definite change in samurai martial arts running up to that period. Not exactly like everybody's fighting really hard and then in 1600, they all change and it's all like, ah, oh, oh. that's not. But 1600 is that period where we see, basically... 1553, if I've got that right, your guns arrive. 1570s, people are starting to really use guns on the battlefield. The sword is becoming a bit more symbolic because if you've got a spear in your hand, you've got a gun in your hand. Um, and then, of course, you've always got a sword. But my point is, is you're focusing on a spear, a gun, a bow uh, with a backup of the sword. And bit by bit, the world is getting closer to peace uh, in Japan. Bit by bit. So what we find is that after it's only one generation remember in the olden days people didn't use to live as long they didn't live as short a life as everybody thinks but they did not use to there was a higher rate of death and a quicker turnover of humans basically so you've got to knock 10 years off your um your average thing so by the age of 25 today we're considered as adults out in the world doing our jobs um even if the legal age is 18 by 25 you're doing what you're meant to be doing in Japan, it was 15. In medieval times, it's 15. By 15, you're out doing what you're doing. By 25, you're an experienced person. By 35, you've got 20 years on people. So from 1600 to 1650, you're looking at two or three generations. Not that they're all dead, but two or three generations are coming through. And change happens. And we've all seen in the world today, 2020, the year of chaos. The world changed quick. And it can change very quickly. And we get people like uh, the Yagyu Shinkagaryu school saying... They have got a new way of doing things. They have got like the, the sword of peace. And it's not that it's new. It's not from the war in periods, but they, they're focusing on the sword of peace and uh, the sword that saves lives, if you like. And Miyamoto Masashi is like, what are these people doing? It's ridiculous. This what they do is crap. They don't have a clue about swordsmanship. And again, we if you watch want to watch that a video on that, it's the Miyamoto Masashi paradox. I did a video on that. And also, I've got another book, which I will go through in the future, where there's another guy in 1800s going, oh, my God, it's, even he is like, now, this is a samurai from the 1800s going, why have we ended up here? This is not martial arts that the old samurai did pre-1600. This is not old battlefield martial arts. What they did is they refined... What you have to realise is that Japanese uh, society created the ronin problem, and the ronin problem... Peace, basically. So what happened is you get a lot of samurai who are fighting. Everybody's happy because everybody's murdering everyone else, capturing the land, taking the money, taking the wives. We're all sorted. Everybody's happy except for the dead. Uh, but then you get peace. And everyone's like, right, it's peace. And then you get Tokugawa lockdown. And then you're like, what happens when you've got peace? High um, productivity and a rise in the middle class. You get a population explosion. When you've got a population explosion, you also, the samurai are have a population explosion with no one dying and no one being killed in wars and everybody sort of by not dying you know what i mean not like randomly you're going to be a lot of you know famine war pestilence and all that you've got a lot more people and you have to share a lot more of a, the same pot of money so bit by bit it's like so people have been pushed on the outside of this pot of money like oh no you're not in our gang you're not and you're finding a lot of ronin are coming about and they're not allowed employment or there's lacking of employment or the samurai um, money's getting low and low. So what do they do? They start teaching martial arts. They start opening it up to richer people, merchants, things like that. So what you've got is actually a lot of people creating their own schools and adding to them and flavoring them. And when you read a school, it's like 16 or something. You're like, wow, oh, that's old. Well, actually, that's the prime of when people were collecting old stuff, actually doing stuff, but having to find things to teach people. So suddenly... 
the Japanese martial arts becomes very philosophical. It's like, okay, well, this is the way of this, and this is Muge, and this, and this is this, and you're like, you've got to have this approach. And, and it gets all the way to the point where now where you sit in Japan, and everybody's like, you've seen them, I've seen them, and I know people get annoyed with me saying this, but I've watched the archers, Zen, this, Zen, that, they look for business, and they can't hit shit, they can't hit toffee. They're like, ah, you know, it doesn't hit anything. But whereas in the old days, it was like, Yabusami, like, kill kill you know you've got to actually kill people and it was about practicality so we have this clear what i'm saying to you guys we have this very clear idea that the japanese martial arts changed around 1600 not overnight it was a very very slow change like katori shinto ryu uh starts as early as it says it starts we don't know uh, a lot of schools have their you know, the foundation date of where they said they came from, a god appears to someone, all the way to when it actually started. And I think even me and Mom Sashi says they've only started teaching recently. But the point is, is that you've got all that and people are adding to it and the people are making things up and you've got all this mess of stuff. And what's happened there is we've lost what is actually Japanese martial arts. What are they? And um, what we do know from these people echoing is that after 1600s, they seem to have changed into something they're not. So we got to get back to the question, what is Taijutsu? Well, Taijutsu, whenever you find it in uh, a medieval document, is literally hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, we have to be careful here. There's unarmed combat and there's hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, hand-to-hand -hand combat seems to be combat with weapons. Unarmed combat, of course, is without weapons. And there is a crossover, don't get me wrong, but I mean, for us guys here. So we seem to find that Taijutsu comes under this idea of... Your Kenjutsu is without doubt a sword. Shuriken Jutsu, you're throwing stuff at people. Um, kyo, kyo Jutsu, uh, Kyo Jutsu, sorry, not Kyo Jutsu, that's um, substantial and insubstantial, out of war. So Kyo Jutsu is where you're actually shooting people. But there seems to be this blend into Tai Jutsu where it's like, okay, you've actually physically with them, you might have a dagger. We're not sure. You might have some knuckle dusters or something. But basically, you're body to body. It's skills with the body. But So it means body, skill. And also, um, you've got jujutsu, the skills of pliancy, the skills of flexibility. And you're like, hmm, okay. So are they different? Well, actually, at the moment, I can't see any difference historically about jujutsu and taijutsu. They seem to be exactly the same thing. Uh, they just talked about in, in, from different um, words so then to add to that you also get a word called kumiuchi um, uchi is to strike kumi is grapple so basically grappling and striking boom so you get kenjutsu shuriken jutsu kyojitsu kyujitsu kyujitsu get out tonsu kyujitsu and then all of a sudden you get um, kumiuchi and that's used quite early on and then on top of that you get yawarate so Yawarate, okay, uh, that means the, they are the soft arts of combat. And you're like, oh, hold on a minute. So we start to get all these arts. Now, I don't personally think, I've yet to research all this, I don't personally think that you're actually going to find a difference between Yawara, Kumiuchi, Jujutsu, Taijutsu. They're the same things. So you can't be like, well, I do Taijutsu and you do Jujutsu. Now you can see a difference. You can clearly see a difference in the Bujinkan with Taijutsu versus Jujutsu, traditional Jujutsu. You can see a very specific way that these two fighting forms are put together. But I would say back in pre-1600s, in fact, back in the Edo period, they are not separate things. They are the same thing. Now we have to go through, there's a lot of research to be done with that. That's my initial um, statement on that there. So what are the samurai martial arts pre-1600? I've pretty much nailed it down to um, projectile weapons. You need some form of projectile weapon. So here we are, we're in the book, How to Be a Modern Samurai, page 98. Bladed weapons, anything with a blade on it. That includes, uh, so shuriken come under projectile and bladed weapons, but shuriken are projectile, um, bladed weapons, swords, daggers, etc. Bludgeoning weapons, things that are just going to give it you know, the event, the, the samurai equivalent of a, um, a baseball bat, I was going to say cricket bat, but most of you are American, um, a rounders bat, much better than baseball, rounders, go look it up. Um, then you need binding skills, so skills with rope and cords, and you also need unarmed combat. 
So basically how to fight without weapons. So once you've got, you can projectile things at people. You can use spears and swords and daggers. You can um, whack people with stuff. You can tie them up and you can grip, grab them and get them down. Uh, then you're pretty much inside of samurai martial arts. Beyond that, there's not much else beyond that. So what we have at the minute is we have a very clear idea of 20th century Japanese martial arts. We have um, an understanding that 19th century Japanese martial arts had become a little bit of um, just a demonstration more than anything. It was very rigid, a bit of a demonstration, competition. We had lots of competitions. It was not quite how you would imagine real combat. In the 18th, 17th centuries, you're getting a lot of Zen and a lot of hidden behind the closed doors. Um, I'll teach you this, you pay me, but I've got more skills, more Kuden. This way he starts in Kuden, 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 and more, more, more the teacher. Instead of like, you need to be out there fighting, here's the information. Now, one of my favourite quotes, I think it's from Mubioshi Ryu, and he says, you've got to have, be up and running I think within seven years, three to seven years. You've got to be able to fight in like three years or something, but you've got to be a master in seven. So the point is absolutely, absolutely, what nobody else seems to point out is, this point is what nobody else seems to point out, is that if you're a samurai going to war at 15, you need to be on the ball. No 15-year-old is going to be an adept in martial arts when it takes five years to become a black belt. No, these guys are up and ready within three years of hard training. And their masters within seven, ten years, something like that. Meaning, not everybody comes a master in seven years. What I mean is, you can you can get it. So martial arts. The point is, pre fifteen hundred martial arts is not this land of secrecy, this land of secret ideas and techniques. Pre sixteen hundred, sorry. You need to get in. You need to start killing. You need to have your clan members doing it fast, and you need to be able to keep those secrets within your clan. Okay, um, but the idea is not like you go and ponder this for a few years in zen like meditation and come to the room bang you know what i mean something's like knife him in the throat <laughs> stuff's coming out you know gut him and all that like the my favorite has always been natori ryu's um three man kill teams i've told you this a million times everybody's talking about this zen martial arts natori is like one of you come at the side one of you come at him at the front one of you stop anyone coming and the other one grip him from behind and just start knifing you know what i mean secrets of samurai warfare there it is so to answer the question Yawarate, um, Jujutsu, um, Kumiuchi, Taijutsu, most likely are the same things uh, with regional differences. Uh, this is where I did have one thing to say. You see sometimes karate is up here, karate is down there, and they're like, oh, the difference is massive. But another person like, well, the difference is the same. So when people say there are massive differences, and some people say there are no differences, that depends on the observer. You can literally be like, there are, I could do loads, like I could get two copies of my book, which are exactly the same, but say, oh, the differences are huge. This one's got like a scratch on this page. I can see that's been worn away here, or I can say they're exactly the same. So that's the point I'm trying to make. If you go pre-1600, you're probably overall going to have a very good idea of the, the martial arts across Japan. They're going to be similar. Warfare across Japan is similar with small changes. Or you could look at it and go, wow, the changes are vast. But when you zoom out, you're like, OK, we can see. And even down to I like Germanic swordsmanship, uh, so German longsword. And even there, you can see half the things the samurai are doing, the Germans are still doing. It's just we're humans. So there you go. Right. This is a bit of a longer video than I normally do, guys. But there you go. So let's round it up. As I said, probably um, they were all pretty much the same with small differences. By 15, 16, 1700, there's a change that starts happening. By 1800, it seems that the way of the old samurai has disappeared and you've just got some sports competition in its way. By 1900, everybody's throwing everything old out and they're studying German, English, warfare tactics and all that sort of stuff. After World War II, you find a love of the samurai again and they're actually now just put it with a bit of, you know, samurai um, legends and all that. It comes over to the West in the 20th century where we get a lot of misrepresented ideas, a lot of mistranslated ideas, a lot of misunderstanding. And in the 21st century with mixed martial arts hammering everyone in the world, everybody's like, well, Japanese martial arts are rubbish. Well, that's because you're, you're doing the strongest mixed martial arts lads against this 
last long tradition of it fading into something that isn't. I reckon if you took an MMA fighter now and somebody from Japan in the 1500s and put them together, they'd be doing very similar things, except there'd be a lot of knife fighting involved as well. And the odd time somebody would have a big broadsword. You know what I mean? Let's have a boom. There you go, guys. Right, enjoy. Get yourself a copy of the book. And I hope, let me know all your thoughts below. What do you think of all that? What are your points of view? <laughs>